What's up everyone, this is Exarian. I'm here with another video tutorial for Emerald Glitchless. This one is for the main manipulation of Emerald Glitchless, which is to get this Mudkip, Naughty Nature, with very good IVs, and then do a few other cool things, uh, like get no encounters to the first rival fight. Uh, this works with any route, so whether you're doing Abraless or uh, the latest Abra route, or some variation of those, um, you can just run it with this mudkip and you'll have a much better time than if you went with a random mudkip. Uh, so this is a five part manipulation. Uh, only one part is essential and that is getting this mudkip and unfortunately that is the hardest part. It's a one frame window at 60 frames per second. The first part of the manip is... You see that I'm facing a zigzagoon on this first fight. Uh, you're manipulating the Zigzagoon's stats, but what you're actually manipulating is the Zigzagoon's uh, RNG advances. So there's two different Zigzagoons you can get in this fight, and one of them advances the RNG uh, by a little bit more. So in order to get the whole manipulation to work, you want to manipulate just one Zigzagoon, and that part is extremely easy. The second part is manipulating the Mudkip, and that's hard. It's a one-frame window. Most runners can't get that more than 25-30% of the time. The third part is manipulating Tackle on the first turn from the Zigzagoon, which you can see I got here because I took some damage after I tackled it. The fourth and fifth parts are manipulating zero encounters from uh, the cutscene after this fight until the first rival fight on Route 103, so that's four patches of grass where you normally get two encounters on average. And in order for you to get that part, you have to get the third part, which is manipulating Tackle uh, successful. Fortunately, those last three parts are not difficult. They're a little harder than the first part, but much easier than uh, the second part of manipulating the Mudkip stats. So first, I'll show them an if, and hopefully it doesn't take too many tries, because then I'll have to start the video over again. Um, you see in the top left corner, I've got Flow Timer, which I explained in my uh, Abra Minip tutorial, uh, which I'll link in the description. Um, so the idea with Flow Timer is it's just a metronome um, like program that helps you time the manipulation. So um, it counts down from uh, two seconds, uh, it'll beep every half second from there until zero, and then I want to press A on the fifth beep. Um, and then here are the offsets for each part of the manip. We got 10.132 seconds for the first part, and then 17.116 for the second part, and so on. So you'll be able to see and hear how this manip goes. Uh, so I am going to I have a save file in front of um, the bag, so you'll see when I load my save file, I'll be right in front of the bag, and then I'll go get the mudkip. Um, so you want to synchronize your soft reset, A, B, start, select, with uh, starting your timer. So I'll do that and try to hit this nip. So the first part is hitting continue. Uh, you don't need to mash too fast, but you don't want to be too slow here. So that was fine. Now here's the hard part. Might have been a bit early. There's the third part. Okay, did we get it? Nope, we got... Probably got the wrong one. No, we got the right one. Okay, there's the fourth part. Sometimes you get a low damage roll, but as long as you don't get it low second damage roll, it's fine. If you're one frame early, you'll always get less damage um, because it's a, a worse attack mudkip. Anyway, so uh, the third part of the manip was um, the timing the text box on Wild Six even appeared to get tackle. And now, pay attention to these elite NPCs. After we time the fourth and fifth inputs, and then we do specific movement through this grass to get no encounters. So I will explain this more once I've finished. And there we go. So that's the manip. Um, so now I'll explain each part in a little bit more detail. Uh, so the first part of the manipulation, you are hitting A on the continue screen. So I'll just go through this without actually doing the manip so I can explain each part. 
Um, so you can just mash through the title screen there, mash through these text boxes, and then right here on this screen, it matters when you press A. Uh, the window is, I believe, 34 frames, so more than half a second um, to press A here in order to get the desired zigzagoon. Um, if you miss that window, you get a different zigzagoon, and what happens is the RNG for the, uh, the zigzagoon fight ends up being one earlier, uh, and that messes with it quite a bit. So um, let's just assume I timed that correctly, then we get into the bag here, and then this part is pretty intuitive. You're just trying to hit a one frame window. Um, most people who run this game learn this as their first minip is just hitting this mudkip. So let's assume we just got it there. And now this input right here, Wild Zigzagoon appeared. So when you clear this text box, that's when Zigzagoon's move is generated. So at this point, nothing has been decided. It could use Tackle or Growl. Um, but once I press the button, then it's locked in. It doesn't matter whether I um, mess around. So its move is decided now. Like, I can, I can do this. I can go into the bag. I can check my stats. It does not matter what I do. The move is locked in. So you want to time that input. Uh, the window is six frames to get tackle, so um, that's pretty big. Uh, with practice and with making sure that your offset is correct, you should pretty much always be hitting that. Or if you miss it, you'll at least know you missed it and you can adjust accordingly next time. Um, there is a little bit of timing that goes into using tackle, um, because if you, if you hit certain windows, you might miss tackle, or like I did in, um, in the minip uh, a few minutes ago. I, I low rolled, so if you if you time it precisely, then you can actually double low roll, and then the minip won't work. But that's very unusual. Don't really need to worry about that. So, um, I would recommend for the first tackle use, don't mash too fast, because I think there's an early miss frame. But really, you don't need to worry about it much. You are almost always going to hit tackle and get the two hit, as long as uh, you execute the zigzagoon tackle minip correctly. So I don't know what mudkip this is. I'm just going to. Uh, go through this fight so I can explain the next two parts. Um, one more thing to note about this fight is you see the Zigzagoon is female here. If the Zigzagoon is female on your actual manip attempt, that means it is not the correct mudkip. The correct mudkip, the naughty nature, will always have a male Zigzagoon. Uh, sometimes you'll see a 21 HP mudkip. You see this one is 20 HP, so it's obviously not the right one. This is just some random kit. Um, Sometimes you'll see 21 HP, and the Zigzagoon will be male, and you'll do a decent amount of damage with uh, Tackle, like you'll knock it into yellow, and it'll actually be one frame late, which is the Quiet. But sometimes it'll be... Um, the Zigzagoon will be female with that Quiet, so it's, it's kind of the same thing, where there can be two Zigzagoons. Um, um, it, it, it might be that you always get a female or a male with this, uh, this window. I'm not, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, with timing your continue input, whether that locks the quiet zig uh, the quiet mudkip into the same zigzagoon. But in any case, female zigzagoon is always bad. Um, you can just reset and try again if you see female. So then this input doesn't matter, and then you get to this text box right here. So you don't actually need to be too precise with this text box, but it helps to. Uh, when you're doing the no encounter minip, um, the main text box that you're looking to time is the one at the end of the birch cutscene uh, before you walk out of the lab. However, timing this text box helps because the RNG in battle advances twice as fast as the RNG outside of battle. So if you are just mashing really fast through this fight and then you're timing the post birch input perfectly, you're going to uh, reach an earlier frame than if you took a while on this fight and then uh, perfectly timed that input. So you want to time this input and then if you were early on this input then try to go a little bit later on the birch input and if you were late uh, you try to go early. So with the offsets that I've provided you need to mash decently fast for this. Might take a bit of practice but it's nothing um, that you need to be worried about um, as long as you don't have any uh, serious strain on your hands happening. Uh, anybody should be able to get it with practice. The nicknaming is the hardest part. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to nickname the mudkip quickly. 
So here's the post birch input. So again, if you if you did the end of fight input too fast, then you want to wait a little bit here. Just if you were like two frames early, then you try to be two frames late here, and vice versa. So then what you want to do is, as soon as you clear this text box, pay attention to the scientist NPC. So I'm going to provide a link to uh, all of the possible NPC movements and their corresponding um, player movements that you need to do through the grass in the video description, so you can just reference that, but you want to make sure that when you're doing this manip, you're paying attention to the scientist movement, otherwise um, you're probably not going to get it. So I'll clear this input, and then he is doing nothing. So there's two frames. Um, there's two frames where he can do nothing. I'll go do it again. Um, let's just pretend... Uh... Okay, that one was... He's not normally over there, but I just want to make sure you guys have the right idea about... Okay, there. So th this is normally what he's facing, is down. So now that's early right, and then up. Um, so that movement doesn't actually exist. Uh, okay, we're gonna just move on here. But you get the idea, right? If he moves early, then it's called like early up or early left or early right. If he moves like right before you exit, then it's called like late left or late up. Um, it'll make sense when you see uh, the pace spin that I link in the video description. So then for some of the scientist movements, there are a few possible outcomes and you need to pay attention to the fat guy NPC outside to see which one you got. Um, some of them you can just narrow it down to one instantly with the scientist movement. So the fat guy is the fat guy here. So right, right, so there's a column for that. This time he goes down, left. You get the idea. Um, so the only tricky part is if you get a scientist movement that requires you to also observe the fat guy, then you have to quickly find the frame in your notes um, before you start the movement here. So then, just a quick guide to reading my movement notes. Um, there are six entries, um, sometimes five. So the first one is whether you go bottom or top here. Uh, so bottom is you turn on either one of these two tiles. It doesn't seem to matter which one. I always go on this tile, but I think this one is the exact same. Top is going to be either one of these, and I always just do the this one. So like if it says bottom top, I'm going to go bottom here, and then it's the same thing here. This is top, and then if the next one is bottom, to get an encounter because this isn't minipped. The next one is bottom, then you take the bottom row. Uh, whoops. So this would be bottom. Nice. I could do this video much more professionally if. Uh... Anyway, so this would be bottom. Just go left there, and this would be top. And there's no chance of getting an encounter if you do this minip correctly. I've never seen it. There's no in-game timer zero like there is in Generation 1, which is really nice. Okay, so the, the first three lines, um, if it says like bottom, top, bottom, that's just for Route 101, and then you reach Old Dale. So in here, the only thing you need to pay attention to is if it says sign for the movement, then you need to turn here. So right after the sign, you turn here. It, I think it works if you turn at any point while you're in Old Dale, like you can, time, you can do it up here, just as long as you don't wait until you're on Route 103 to turn, but just easiest to do it here. So you've got a nice cue with the sign. Um, and then the next one, there's only two possible um, tiles that you can turn on here, and this one is, or there's only two possible um, in my notes. So it's either middle or top, none of my minips are turning on the bottom tile. So if you didn't turn in Old Deltone because the notes didn't say sign, if it just skipped that, um, then you'd be in this column. And so you'd either be going here or you'd be going here. 
Uh, and then the last entry is going to be either one before sign or one after sign. Most of them say one after sign. So this is the sign. So you're either going to be turning here or you're going to be turning here. And then you're just going to take the fastest path to rival. So either like that or like this. And the minute bends there. We might be extending it in the future. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, took a while to figure out all of the kinks with this minip, all of the inputs that are required. Um, but yeah, other than the one frame mudkip minip, the rest of this you should be able to get uh, pretty much every run with practice, and it saves a decent amount of time because you don't get growl and you don't get encounters that are useless. Um, what I recommend for anyone who isn't going for like a top time is with the one frame mudkip minip. If you don't get it first try, then you know don't reset the run entirely, just try again. Um, because you have a save file, it only loses like 20-25 seconds. If you're on to, you know, third, fourth, fifth try, maybe then just start over because you don't want to be a minute behind. It's kind of hard to focus when you're that far behind and trying to get a PB, but... Uh, but yeah, you, you don't have to reset the run if the one frame minute fails. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Uh, I can answer them. Again, I will provide links in the description for the uh, offsets that I use in Flow Timer and uh, the instructions for no encounter minip, uh, movement that you have to take based on the NPCs, uh, and I'll provide a link to the Flow Timer program as I did in the Abra Minip video and a link to the Abra Minip video, so yeah, I should be all set. Thanks for watching!